Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table, and this is Terraforming Mars, an economic resource management game for one to five players. Let me show you how to play. In the relatively near future, Earth has a serious overcrowding problem. Humankind has to spread out to another planet or perish. You and your friends play corporations that are competing to terraform Mars, as it says on the tin. There are three main metrics involved in making Mars habitable. Raising the planet's temperature, increasing its atmosphere's oxygen, and creating enough oceans on the planet's surface. You'll tweak these dials by investing in a variety of different projects with your space money. Once those three conditions are met, the end of the game is triggered. Whichever player has contributed the most to making Mars more livable wins the game. Terraforming Mars is mostly an economic resource management game. There are six main currencies in the game, which you track on this game board. Mega credits, which are represented by a capital M and the Euro symbol, steel, titanium, plants, energy, and heat. The numbered areas on the board represent your corporation's output or production of these different currencies. You can think of them as the potential salary you earn every generation. The actual amount of these different currencies you own is tracked with bronze, silver, and gold cubes, which represent values of 1, 5, and 10. So this arrangement means you have two mega credits, and every round you'll earn three more. Your marker starts on this spot on what looks like a score tracker. And it is, but for most of the game, it represents your terraforming rating, or TR. That tracks how much you've contributed to terraforming Mars, which boosts your mega credits income. Every time you raise the temperature on Mars, increase its oxygen, or build an ocean, your marker moves ahead on this track. And every round, your actual mega credits income is this number plus this number. So you would earn 26 mega credits each round if this was the situation. You'll start the game with a choice of two corporation cards, which get you your starting resources and income, and some sort of special power. Central to the game are these cards, which represent different projects you can undertake to make Mars more habitable. Off the top of the game, you get dealt 10 of these, and every round, you'll get four more. They're not free though. Every card you want to keep will cost you three mega credits. The cards come in three flavors, red, green, and blue. The red cards are usually expensive one-off cards that you pay to trigger, and they go face down next to your board. The green ones are similar one-off projects, but they stay face up, stacked so that you can still see the top of each card. This is important because other cards may interact with or rely on the tags at the top right of the cards. The tags on the red cards only count as you're playing the card, and turning the red cards over signifies that those tags are no longer accessible or relevant. And finally, the blue cards have either a passive effect that gets triggered when something else happens, or an action that you can trigger on your turn once per round. You play your blue cards face up and spread out so that you can see all of the text on them. When you want to fire off an action, you put one of your cubes on the card to remind yourself that you've used that card's action this round. It costs you three bucks to buy the card into your hand, but the cost to actually play the card is up here. Many cards have some sort of prerequisite to them. You can't play this one until the temperature on Mars is at least 4 degrees. And this one's no good until there are at least 3 oceans on the planet. Needless to say, you can't play a card unless its prerequisites are met. And you can't play a card if you can't do what it tells you to do. So if a card gives you a perk for reducing your energy production, but your energy production is already at zero, you can't play that card quite yet. Cards with this brown building tag can be paid for with any combination of mega credits and steel cubes. And each steel cube you spend is worth two mega credits. 
If you overpay for a card with steel, you can't make change. Similarly, cards with this space tag can be paid for with a combination of mega credits and titanium. And each titanium cube is worth three mega credits. And you can't make change with titanium either. Whenever you see one of the currency symbols on its own, it refers to an actual unit of that currency. If you see the symbol surrounded by this thick cork border, it's referring to production of that currency. So this means you increase your plant production, and this means you get two actual plants. Whenever you see a red border around something, it means that thing can happen to anyone you choose, even yourself. So, cards with red bordered elements usually let you attack your opponents by stealing from them or by making them lose stuff. You choose one opponent to affect. If the card reduces someone's production and none of your opponent's production levels can be lowered, then that negative effect has to happen to you instead, or you can't play the card. A round represents a whole generation of people living on the red planet. You track generations from the bottom of the board, but really they have no bearing on gameplay. This is more for your interest to see how many generations it took to terraform Mars. There are four phases in a round. You pass the first player token clockwise, you draw and buy up to four new cards, everyone takes turns taking actions, and then you collect your income. The first two phases, passing the marker and buying new cards, are skipped in the first generation since they're part of the game's initial setup steps. Let's take a look at the meatiest phase of a round, taking actions. In player order, each player takes one or two of the available actions, or passes. Once you've passed, you're out of play until all other players have passed. And once all other players have passed, the actions phase is over. There are seven possible actions you can take. You can either take one or two actions, and if you take two, they can be the same action twice or two different actions. Here are the seven actions. You can play a card, as we've seen. This is what you'll probably be doing most of the time, but there are other options. You can take an action to pay for one of these standard projects listed on the board. These are all projects that you can pull off using certain cards, but sometimes you just don't get the cards you need, so you have to pay through the nose to complete one of these ones. This one is called Sell Patents. It lets you sell any number of your cards for one buck a piece, which hurts because you probably bought those cards for three bucks a piece. So why would you ever sell them that cheap? Well, sometimes you've been able to draw a card for free. And sometimes you've bought a card thinking it will play into your strategy, but it didn't. Sometimes you can't play a card anymore because it says something like, the temperature has to be less than negative 14, and the temperature is already past that point, so the card is useless. And sometimes you just really, really need the money. This one lets you pay 11 bucks to increase your energy output. Buying an asteroid for 14 bucks lets you increase the planet's temperature by one step. The aquifier lets you pay 18 bucks to build an ocean. You take an ocean tile from the stack of nine and you can only build an ocean on one of these blue spaces. No one can own an ocean once it's built. For 23 bucks, you can place a greenery tile somewhere on the planet. You can't place it on any of these spots reserved for an ocean or on this spot that's reserved for a particular city. You put a marker on it to lay claim. If it's your first greenery tile, it can go in any legal spot, but every successive greenery tile you place has to be adjacent to one of your existing tiles, if at all possible. If not at all possible, you can break that rule. If there are some goodies mentioned on that particular spot, you take them when you place the tile. So extra plants, extra steel, a free card, and so on. Remember that when you increase temperature or oxygen or build an ocean, 
your marker goes up on the terraforming rating track. If all of the oceans are built, or if temperature or oxygen are already at max, you don't get that boost on the TR track. And if you hit these thresholds, you get a perk. Extra heat production here and here, a free ocean here while supplies last, or a free temperature increase if you move the marker to 8% oxygen. The last standard project you can undertake is to buy a city for 25 bucks. Unlike greenery tiles, you can place a city anywhere that isn't reserved for an ocean or some other special tile, and as long as it's not adjacent to another city. Except if you have a card that lets you build the special city of Noctis, which has to go in this spot, regardless of whether there's a city next to it or not. At the end of the game, cities are worth a point for every greenery tile that surrounds them, no matter who owns those greenery tiles. The standard project of building a city also increases your mega credits production by one step. Anytime you place a tile next to an ocean tile, even another ocean tile, you get two bucks per adjacent ocean tile. So placing this ocean here is worth two bucks, and placing this greenery tile here is worth four bucks. Well, those are the standard projects you can complete as one of the two actions you take on your turn. Another available action is to pay eight bucks to claim a milestone. There are five milestones listed here along the bottom of the board. You can claim the terraformer milestone if your terraforming rating is 35 or more. You can become the mayor of Mars if you own at least three cities. Claim the gardener milestone if you've built at least three greenery tiles. The builder milestone is available if you have at least eight brown building tags in play. And to claim the planner milestone, you need to have 16 or more cards in your hand. Even though there are five available milestones, only a total of three of them can be claimed in a single game, and only one player can claim a given milestone. You can take an action to fund one of these five awards without having to meet any prerequisite. Once you do, you'll have unlocked a scoring contest that's judged at the end of the game. The player who wins each activated award contest by the end of the game gets five points, and the runner-up gets two points. Tied players each get full points for their placement. The winner may or may not be you, even though you were the one to fund the award. Each award can only be activated once, and only three total awards can be activated in a game. The cost of sponsoring an award goes up with each award that gets sponsored. These are the five award contests that you or your opponents can potentially unlock. Win the Landlord Award for owning the most tiles on the map. Win the Banker Award for having the highest mega credits production. Note that's production, not actual money. Win the Scientist Award by having the most science tags in play. Win the Thermalist Award for having the most heat resource cubes. Note that's cubes, not production. And you can win the Miner Award by having the most steel and titanium resource cubes. Obviously, most cubes means highest total cube value. This guy technically has more individual cubes than this guy. But a value of 40 still beats a value of 9. Another action you can take on your turn is to fire off an action on one of the blue cards that you've already built. If a blue card says effect, that's a passive thing, and you get some benefit in response to another game event. Say, whenever a city gets built, you get something. But if the card has an action on it, look for a red arrow. Then, provided you meet the action's requirements, you can put one of your player tokens on the card and use that action. Actions can be used once per generation, so the cube reminds you that you've already used it. If six separate currencies weren't enough for you, some of the cards create additional currencies, like microbes or animals. Pile up bronze tokens on those cards to keep track of the extra stuff you get. 
Some are worth points at the end of the game. Remember that the corporation you're playing may have a blue action that you can use by placing a cube on that card too. The final two actions you can potentially take on your turn are to spend either 8 plant cubes or 8 heat cubes. 8 plants buys you a greenery tile, which you place on the map by following the rules we've already looked at. Building a greenery tile raises the oxygen level of Mars. 8 heat cubes lets you raise the planet's temperature one notch. In either of these cases, as long as the gauge isn't already at max, you gain 1 TR. When everyone has passed, the actions phase is over, and you enter the production phase. All of the energy cubes you've collected but haven't spent get turned into heat cubes. Energy is sort of a use it or lose it currency. Next, you add your mega credits production number to your TR number, and take that amount in income. Then you collect more steel, titanium, plants, energy, and heat according to your production values. Remove any player cubes that you use to activate your blue card's actions, or your corporation's ability. All of this can happen simultaneously, as long as you trust each other. With production over, you perform the two phases you skipped the first time around. In phase one, move the generation marker up one tick, and pass the start player marker on clockwise. Phase two is the research phase where, in turn order, everyone draws four cards and buys zero to four of them into their hand for three mega credits apiece. Once that's done, you launch into phase three, taking actions starting with the first player. There's also a drafting variant where everyone draws four cards, keeps one, and passes those cards on clockwise during even numbered generations and counterclockwise during odd-numbered ones. You keep passing the dwindling decks until everyone has four new cards to choose from to either buy or discard. This draft variant is a good way to keep potentially powerful cards out of your opponent's hands, which makes for a more strategic but ultimately longer game. Once all nine ocean tiles have been placed on Mars, and the temperature has been raised to 8 degrees, and the oxygen level is 14%, that triggers the end of the game. You have successfully terraformed Mars. You finish out the round, and then the production phase happens one last time. In turn order, everyone gets the chance to spend their last batch of plants, adding greenery tiles to Mars. The TR track turns into a points track. Keep your point markers where they are, and then count up the points in this order. Dole out 5 points to the winner of each of the awards that got activated, if applicable. The runner-up gets 2 VPs, except in a 2 player game. And tied players get the full award for the placement they achieve. Next, award 5 points for each milestone that a player claimed. Each greenery tile you own gets you 1 point. Each city tile that you own is worth one point for every greenery tile adjacent to it, whether that greenery tile is yours or someone else's. Then count up all the VPs that your cards may give you, along with the values of any special resources you may have piled up on them. Whoever has the highest score wins, and mega credits break ties. The Rules Gremlin is here to help me with a quick roundup of curb cases and weird stuff that may trip you up in your first few plays. Some cards refer to Jovian tags. The back pages of the rulebook list all the available tags in the game. There should be a small handy player guide to help you with all of this, but there isn't. This is the Jovian tag. It may help you leverage some metascoring opportunities at the end of the game. This white city tile may look like it's only supposed to go on this Noctis city space, but then you wonder, what do you build up here on Ganymede and Phobos? Once you build one, are the others off limits, since you've only got one white tile? No, Ganymede, Phobos, and Noctis city all use the normal grey city tiles. 
The white tile is reserved for this Capital City card, which is a special case that gets you VPs for the surrounding oceans as well as surrounding greenery tiles. A couple of the cards reference volcanoes, and on at least one of those cards, there's no mention of what a volcano is, and the rulebook is no help. The volcanoes are these four tiles with bolded text on them. Although the production numbers only go up to 10 on your mat, it is possible to go beyond that. The rulebook recommends just piling cubes on top of cubes to represent bigger numbers, and I guess pray that you don't live in an earthquake zone. None of the production counts can fall below zero, except for mega credits, which bottoms out at negative five. So, five gets subtracted from your TR income during the production phase. The player cubes aren't limited, so if they run out, you can use coins, uh, lint, or p potatoes. To set up the game, put the board on the table and place a white marker on generation one, 0% oxygen, and negative 30 degrees Celsius, otherwise known as basically Canada. Stack up nine ocean tiles here. Everyone places their marker on 20 TR to start. If you want a more meaty game, shuffle these corporation era cards with the little red arrow into the deck. Otherwise, take them out. They make the game longer and more complex. Everyone grabs a player mat and resource cubes in their color and starts at one progress in each of the different currencies. If you're playing with corporation era cards though, everything starts at zero production. New players get dealt a baby corporation card and 10 project cards. Everyone else gets two non-baby corporation cards and 10 project cards. The baby beginners start with 42 bucks and they get all of their 10 cards for free. Non-baby players choose one corporation from the two they're dealt and have to pay three bucks per project card they want to keep. The first player is the last player to have won a game of Terraforming Mars, which, if you're new to the game, presents kind of a chicken egg issue. In turn order, everyone reveals their corporation card and takes whatever starting resources are listed on that card. And cards you didn't decide to buy get discarded face down. Then you launch straight into the actions phase, beginning with the starting player. And now you're ready to play Terraforming Mars. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.